Let's do one more example of torque. So we have a disc. This disc has four different forces applied to it. We want to find the net torque on the disc. So if this is force one, this is force two, this is force three, this is force four, the net torque is gonna be the torque due to each of these individually. Now torque, R, F perpendicular, or R perpendicular to F, it doesn't matter which one we break into components, we just need R and F perpendicular to each other. Okay, so for force one, torque, uh, let's write it up here by it. Torque one, the lever arm always starts at the rotation axis, which is in the center, and points out to where this force is applied. So R1 is the radius of the disc, so 10 centimeters, so 0.1 meter, the force is 30 newtons, and these are perpendicular to each other. So we would write sine of 90 if we wanted to use the generic equation that was RF sine of phi. Now this torque, if you ignore all those other three forces, and just this 30 newtons was applied to that edge, this would make the disc rotate clockwise. In this coordinate system they've listed, that would be the negative z direction, so negative k hat. I mentioned that in the previous video about torque. This comes from the cross product, r cross f. Oops. If I put my fingers of my right hand in the direction of R and bend them, not bad, bend those fingers. So I have my fingers pointing in the positive Y direction. I need to rotate my wrist so that I can bend them to the right the direction of this force, my thumb points away from me. That is the negative z direction. Okay, torque for force two. The lever arm starts at the rotation axis and goes out to the force. So this is R2. That's five centimeters. So 0 0.05 meters. Now the force itself is 30 newtons, but this force has X and Y components. We only care, let me do F sub Y. We only care about this Y component of the force because that is what's perpendicular to the lever arm, R2. We could draw the Y2 over, the Y component way over here. It's a little confusing to have that force so big. But that force has an X and a Y component. It's only the Y component that is causing rotation. So torque two is that lever arm, the 0.05 meters, and then the force is the 30 sine 45 is what gives us that component of the force. Which, by the way, that also comes from using the equation RF sine phi, where phi is this angle between R and F. Now this force would cause this disc to rotate counterclockwise. If I follow the same cross product rule I just mentioned, if we put our fingers of our right hand pointing to the right, and bend them in this direction, 
our thumb points out at us, that's the positive z direction. Okay, force three. The lever arm, we start at the rotation axis and go out to the force. So R3 points to the left. It has a length of five centimeters, so 0.05 meters. The force is 20 newtons. The angle between them is 90. So sine of 90 is one. This force would also make the disc rotate counterclockwise. Following the right hand rule, if I point my fingers to the left and bend them down in the direction of that 20 Newton force, my thumb points out at me, that's the positive K hat direction. Okay, one more. Four. If I draw this lever arm, I start at the rotation axis and I go out to the force. The lever arm has a length of 10 centimeters. The force is 20 newtons, but we should be able to recognize that there is no torque. That's equivalent to trying to push inwards towards the hinges on the edge of a door. Right, we don't cause rotation. The force has no component that is perpendicular to that lever arm. No force perpendicular. That torque is zero. Now the equation over here, RF sine phi, the angle between these is 180, sine of 180 is zero. So you can get there as well from that equation. But also try to have that conceptual thought process behind it. So the net torque, torque one, this one's what, three? But it's in the negative z direction, so negative three k hat units of Newton meters. This one, uh, I'm going to use my calculator, times 30 times the sine of 45, 1.06 k hat. So that one's in Newton times meters as well. The third one is positive k hat. That one is going to be, what, 1? I know I should be able to do that basic math, but sometimes. In each case, I had R in meters, the force in Newtons. So let's see, negative three plus one plus the 1.06. And I didn't do that right, so let's see. So net torque is negative 0 0.94. I tend to write it as Newton times meters as opposed to meters times Newtons, just so I don't confuse my meters with milla, the prefix. And the direction is the negative k hat. Negative k hat means if I point my thumb away from me, I would see my fingers making or pointing in a clockwise direction. So this disc, having those forces acting on, them, on it at those location would rotate clockwise and the magnitude of the torque is 0.94. Now again, that's not joules. Newtons times meters is our torque. 
it's not joules until we've rotated the disk through some sort of radians, some sort of distance.